and welcome back so i'm sure everybody's been anticipating the new release of the necro class and here it is this is my magic and necro this is not a build video this is a review video because i know there's a lot of people i've been watching a lot of different streams and everybody's like how's the necro is it overpowered is it how's magic and necro is it really strong how does it perform in pvp well i've had quite a lot of opportunity to pvp i hit level 50 about a couple of hours yesterday um pvp probably for about a good 16 hours at uh in level 50 bgs and i can say wholeheartedly that magic and necro is super severely underpowered the primary reason is that most of their abilities are very very lackluster so it works really good in pve where nothing moves and i'm sure you've seen videos with people uh, showing these wombo combos on target dummies but pvp is not a target dummy people move they los they heal themselves they cc break people don't just typically stand there and do nothing at least not the people if you're looking for competitive play i know in pcna and battlegrounds for the most part we have a lot of competitive play in the bgs i've been having some really good fights the past couple of hours and i can say wholeheartedly that necro is super super underwhelming primarily as a dps it can work kind of like a debuff a debuffer it can function in a healing position it can also be utilized sort of as a ranged spell caster but for the most part there is a lot lacking in the magica necro and the reason being we'll go into right now so the primary spammable that you have access to i know ricochet is basically the equivalent of crushing shock it literally does the exact same amount of damage except that it'll bounce every third cast it will do a little bit more damage and it will bounce to two other opponents so it's not that primary problem because it literally does the exact same amount of damage as if you're running crushing shock the primary problem is with the blast bones i'm not sure what the health was on the pts but on live the health is something where around 7.5k which means typically when you cast it it's going to die very quickly the other problem is as you can see there it says summon a flaming skeleton from the ground after 2.5 seconds 2.5 seconds is a long time just imagine if you're you ever try casting the warden bear would you ever try doing that in the middle of combat probably not well, this is basically what you're doing on a rotation every 2.5 seconds, and that is just the cast time. It has a cast time where it will basically rise up from the earth, and then it'll do its thing, and then it'll finally run towards its target. So it has quite a bit of a delay. I've heard people say that Magicka Necro is kind of like Magicka Sorc, or maybe like Warden, where it kind of has delayed burst it really has no burst because most of the time the ability either does no damage it can be blocked and i've pvp and i've ran it ran a, a sword and shield build and the ability can be blocked and it does next to no damage the other issue that magic uh, necro has is that its sustain is terrible it has terrible sustain the only sustain that necro has are come in some abilities either you're cleansing yourself and one of the summon one of the abilities here um, you can either choose to get expunge which will give you if you have two ne negative effects on you it'll give you back a thousand magic and a thousand stamina if you choose to go that route you may not want to you may not even want to use the ability it's really good if you've just gotten maybe like a curse on you or an execute from a sork but if you've just been hit with like a really big dawnbreaker the last thing that you want to do is decrease your health even further when someone is there spitting to win in your face the last thing you're going to want to do is sit there and pull the negative effect off from the dot from the from the dawnbreaker works okay to pull off things like uh, talons or if you're fossilized 
But the, again, the last thing you want to do when you're in a position where you've just been CC is lower your health intentionally so that it makes it easier for the person who's trying to kill you. The other issue is that a lot of the abilities are ground effects. As an example, one of the biggest tooltips um, that they have is here is in is in the Avid Boneyard. I know here I don't have any gear on, but if you're well built, and again, in no CP, typically around 30k Magicka with about 3.5 to 4k spell damage, this is going to have anywhere north of 22, 23, 24, 25k. The problem is is that it's six meters six meters is okay but again so many abilities in the game at least from the standpoint of stamina have seven meters tooltip if you're fighting a dk dk has a passive that increases the range of his abilities by an additional two meters so he can basically sit outside of the range of your area effects and take no damage the other issue is that some of the other abilities for example the shocking either the mystic siphon or the detonating siphon either one of those <clears throat> well built this is going to again is going to have a 25k 24k tooltip in no cp with someone who's running roughly 30,000 magicka and about 3.5k spell damage the problem is it's even smaller than than the other ability right this ability is six meters we'll kind of take a look at it here you can see how big it is so we'll go ahead. It looks fairly big, but again, when it comes to... Let's actually go outside so we don't hit the guard. When you actually drop it here, you can stand anywhere around it. It does decent damage. It does ice damage. The problem is, is that it's an area of effect. Most stand builds have 25% reduction. Either they're using Dew Wield and they're using um, Whirling Blades or Blade Coke, or if they're a Night Blade, they have Blur, and Blur reduces the damage by 25%. It is a damage over time, and it's a damage over time over 10 seconds. It's one of the problems that DK has with a lot of its dots, it's that the duration on the dots are very long. The other issue is that if depending upon which morph you choose i tried both morphs and both morphs are a little lax a little lackluster because people can just walk right out of it and this particular morph reduces um both gives major breach as well as major fracture but only while they're still inside the moment they walk out of it the major fracture the debuff leaves and of course to do more damage you need to have a corpse the problem with the corpses is that typically they're the easiest way to put it they're in essence on a cooldown which is part of a problem instead of having an ability that just summons a corpse or having the ability to kill your to kill your summon to create a corpse for example if i were to summon the intense mender and then cast the ability again the corpse doesn't die it just recasts itself after eight seconds this particular morph will die and will leave a corpse behind but again with a lot of your abilities that do a lot of damage that are tied to a corpse it means that those abilities are in essence not available until either your blast bone dies or your intense mender dies or if you're running the buff on the back bar once this basically hits the 10 second mark you're able to cast it again and it will drop the skeleton on the floor and you're able to use it that way so it creates a problem in that a lot of the hard-hitting abilities that are ground effects are basically on cooldowns i would say at a minimum of eight seconds because this is the shortest duration that you have access to that will create a corpse on the excuse me a corpse on the ground or if someone for example dies in the battlegrounds they will leave behind a corpse and of course if there are other necros they too will leave corpses behind so you'll have to find a corpse to basically make use of the ability the other problem is that the corpse for example the shocking siphon ability is very very small we'll take a look at it right here and you'll see that the the range on this ability 
is very small. So we'll go ahead, kill him. And you see right there, that's this is pretty far. This is the heel. You can actually sit pretty far back, as you can see. And of course, it'll sit there and it'll drain HP. The other ability that we want to take a look at is right here. And that's the, the shocking morph. Either morph. Let's go ahead and kill this thing. I'll freeze the flesh off your bones. Let's kill this one. Oops. All right. So as you can see, actually, here we go. Here's a corpse, and that's how small the radius is for your ground effect. This this has a tooltip of roughly, you know, like I said, fully buffed up, about twenty five thousand. But it is super lackluster in PvP. It is literally useless. As you can see, it's really small. This is something that is designed for PVE. It is not designed for PvP. Sure, you can, you know, the, the beam will connect and if someone walking in between, the beam will take damage. But realistically, all you have to do is strafe around and you will take no damage. I've tried it multiple times. It really is not worth using. The other issue is that, of course, it's dependent upon where the corpse is so if for example maybe that someone died but they died all the way over there and i can i would have to either walk over there to make use of the ability to and stand in it so that if if i get attacked somebody will basically take damage otherwise it basically becomes useless this is a useless ability in pve the skeletal mage i've actually been using it it works okay the primary problem is, of course, with pet targeting. The other issue is that it has low, it has, has weird targeting in that it will target the closest enemy and not the person that you're attacking. As it says there, if you're running the magic version, it says the mage attacks the closest enemy and it's every two seconds. And that presents a problem because obviously if you're focusing someone, you would want your skeletal mage to focus the person that you're focusing. Unfortunately, in group combat, it doesn't do that. It ends up, it does AOE damage, as it says there, um, the, the attacks every two seconds, and of course, attacks them and all enemies nearby in a four meter radius, of course. So just so you know, you, you already saw how big the five meter radius is. So the four meter radius is equally lackluster. So literally, unless you're standing right right here, like if there's one guy here and then I'm over here, this is about how far the person has to be to take the AOE, the AOE damage from the Skeletal Mage. I think I touched already on, this is basically the bread and butter. This is the frags. This is the spectral bow of the Necro. And like I said before, it has really low HP. The summon can be killed before it hits its target. It can be slowed. It can be rooted. It can be CC'd. And in ironically, it can even be outrun. And I've had several times where I've seen somebody at range and then I will cast it and then nothing will happen because what eventually happens is the person gets out of range and then it just ends up blowing up as you can see right here this is kind of what it will look like you can see how long this takes it's a fairly long time to basically wait for damage and a person once this person sees that of course the person can just move out of the way so like i said this works really good for pve not so great as you can see there's the tether I would say that the, the tether heel works really well. Um, not this one. There is the tether here. Where is it? Right here. Either morph if you're looking to heal your group or if you're looking to regen a little bit of stamina. For example, if you're running a Destro Resto or if you're running you know, a, a lightning staff on the front bar and you're using an ice staff on the back bar to block or sword and shield and you want a way to restore stamina, then the mortal coil is the way to go. Or you can go with the braided tether and of course in five meter radius so that, so that you can heal yourself and of course your allies that are near you within five meters. This is a decent ability I would say if you're a doing 1v1 or if you're out solo PVPing, but for group play, the primary problem with this ability is that the skeleton 
course you can summon it and there it is right there and then it will heal you four times it procs every two seconds the issue is that of course it heals as it says it heals you or it heals the lowest ally so if you're in the middle of getting hit and then you go ahead and you pop this ability because you want to heal yourself unfortunately if someone next to you gets ends up getting a low they will end up stealing your heals the other issue like i said before about a lot of the necro abilities that are really good for example either either one of the tethers but especially the tether heal when you want to get a heal the primary problem is that you have to have a body either you have to wait for your armor buff to basically the timer to go below um, 10 so that you can reapply it and then of course that's a waste of magic up because it's it's meant to last 20 seconds and you're recasting it early so that you can get a skeleton on the floor or you can use your bone blast but again the issue is that if it goes too far um or if you if somebody else uses the summon or if for example you accidentally consume it with for example you have the ability here to consume the corpses that are on the ground and it will either give you um, a lackluster duration on major protection or it will give you some extra ultimate gen so in terms of necro's ability to burst primarily comes from the glacial colossus this is the magicka version it's not that difficult to get people to into low positions typically what happens is if you see a group of people and maybe they're like at half hp typically the way i would do it is i would cast ghostly embrace which is basically your ranged aoe slow and root and it looks like that right looks just like that and basically it pops three circles on the ground and each circle can immobilize one person so if there's a bunch of people only up to three people will be immobilized so in that sense that too is a little lackluster especially because the necromancer has no gap closer and it also has no mobility it also has no buffs it has access to none of the buffs major sorcery you know none of the critical buffs basically nothing it has access to nothing except for major except for major vulnerability um, that's tied to an ultimate here and minor vulnerability that is tied to agony that is also tied to someone synergizing um, this ability the other buff that it does have access to like i said is a very lackluster duration on or is it not this one there we go so this it only lasts two seconds per corpse it's important to understand that it is it is a free ability but it is a free ability with a very very short duration And that's basically that's basically the heal the heal will apply to you for up to 28 meters and as you see there it was regening a little bit of stamina this ability with the ravenous goliath is a very good ability but again without without a gap closer and of course with so many things that remove snares the primary problem is being able to stay within range and it also has a very small radius of about five five meters to six meters as well so then of course it centers on the caster um in terms of this is actually the better morph agony totem you can see here you can cast it basically that's what it looks like the primary problem is this is the necromancer's only form of hard cc it's the only way that you're able to cc opponents it's an aoe cc and it has a delay of two seconds my issue with that is that the primary problem is that when someone gets close to you you have either from range you have no way to cc someone from ranged unless you choose the other morph of um summoner armor going with beckoning armor the primary problem with beckoning armor is that if you're trying to los 
someone who is at range, for example, maybe someone who has a back bar bow, or someone who, like for example, a melee knight, a melee knight blade, a magic knight blade, etc. If you're trying to find some line of sight, the moment they hit you, it automatically closes the gap and gives them free CC immunity, which you would think pulling people on a class that has no gap closer would be good realistically typically it doesn't work out very well especially obviously if you are trying to 1vx and you're looking for line of sight the last thing you want to do is pulling people closer to you when you have no mobility and a very expensive slow right because this costs roughly um, the base is 3700 it's probably going to cost you around 3300 to 3300 to cast i really do like this ability it works out really well to get the bone the um, glacial colossus off but my primary problem is that most of the damage abilities that necromancer has access to are very lackluster they don't do any they don't do enough damage the other morph the spirit guardian is not worth using it's not worth using on a magic build because you really need the healing because typically necromancer is a little lackluster when it comes to healing either you need a corpse for mortal coil or whichever morph that you choose or you need to basically stay in range and hope that no one else is around you um, that will basically steal the mender from you or you will have to use um, either blood sacrifice or resistant flesh it doesn't have a high tooltip it works with the necromancer passives it works kind of like coagulating blood whereas the according to your passives the lower you are the more likely you are to critical heal the only issue that i have with resistant flesh is that of course you ha it works kind of like honor the dead so if you're facing this way if you're facing teammates and someone gets a little low you can heal them but if you want to heal yourself you have to pan your camera around the other way or look in a direction where of course you can't see teammates so that you can heal yourself but of course that obscures your vision the other morph um heals someone else and of course it will consume a corpse to do so to heal you and it'll heal someone else so if you're looking to utilize this ability this is the morph to utilize it works a lot better than the other morph the other morph will give you 50 percent of the heal it will give you in spell and physical resistance but it is a mediocre three seconds i typically wouldn't use it it works okay but i think the duration should be like five seconds excuse me and that's basically it in terms of damage basically only have nothing here does damage like everything here is a heal in terms of damage the hungry sith is the hungry scythe is not meant to do damage it's typically meant to heal but again if you're if you have many people around you this is the ability that you're going to want to use to heal if you're running a a melee build but if you're running a ranged build it's basically going to be useless until you get gap closed and of course the more people around you the better it gets the other ability here typically if you're not looking to have yourself basically get gap closed for free by every person pelting you from range it works good for the shitty boltards not so good for many of the other builds that are coming around you especially a person who is like a melee night blade who just happens to hit you with a poison injection and then gets free gap closed to you and free cc immunity before you even know it and of course because you could be fighting one person over here and all of a sudden somebody comes and hits you with a light attack and then now you have that person on top of you as well it could be like for example a Nightblade, I'm mean, not a Nightblade, a, um, a Magic DK with a, with a staff. And of course, the last thing I want to do is give a free gap close to a class like Magic of Nightblade that's just going to come in, fossilize me, and start whipping me to death. 
the other ability here does make your um, your totems, not your totems, your skeletal mage here, this one, and of course the archer that is here. But the problem is, is that the duration is only for five seconds. It's pretty lackluster. Really good for crowd control. It does maim. It does root. It's a 50% slow. Um, the other morph, on the other hand, is pretty lackluster. Maybe the duration should be pushed to something like eight seconds or ten seconds. At least the duration of the abilities. Um, because the, the abilities typically last... Either this one, the Spirit Guardian, will last 16 seconds or 8 seconds, or the other morph here will typically last for 16 seconds. So I would imagine at least, at the very least, give it half the duration, up to 8 seconds, to improve so that these abilities will do a little bit more damage. And of course, since the Necro has really shitty sustain, that will help with the Necro's ability to sustain. Of course, Stamina doesn't have any of these problems because obviously stamina overperforms and has other better abilities to use as spammables instead of being forced into using like ricochet and again the hungry side or the ruinous side is not meant to be spammed it's meant to be when you get basically surrounded by of course more than one enemy it gives you access to a really nice heal that works really well on stamina not so well on magic and that's basically the amount of abilities that you have that do damage you basically have two abilities you have ricochet excuse me three you have the ricochet which is basically the equivalent of crushing shop except every third cast will do 20 percent more damage and bounce to two other opponents <clears throat> and then you have the blast bones that you hope and pray makes it to its target before it dies and then, of course, you have the AoE that nobody will stand in. And then you have the real AoE that nobody will definitely not stand in. And then you have the Skeletal Mage that will target, unfortunately, the closest enemy, who could be a 50k HP tank. And that's basically it. That's basically all the damage that Necro has outside of a summon. Everything here is a heal. And that's basically the Necro in a nutshell. It's very lackluster. Um, I'm sure it works really well in PvE because you can because obviously in PvE it doesn't matter if you're AoEing down the mobs. It's like hey, as long as the mobs die, that's all that matters. The mobs aren't going to walk out of your AoE, and of course the blast bone for the most part is going to make it to its target because no one's going to run away from it, no one's going to attack it, no one's going to CC or slow it or root it. And then, of course, the mobs are not going to move out of the way of your either Mystic Siphon or Detonating Siphon. And that is the Necro, at least the Magicka version, in a nutshell. Superiorly weak, underwhelming, and in need of buffs. I don't know how, how they would buff it, but after probably about 200 Battlegrounds and numerous attempts at different builds i tried multiple builds i did rattle cage with um with willows i did rattle cage with desert rose i did desert rose and magic of furnace to create better to create better sustain the primary problem is is that necromancer healing is a little lackluster you have a lot of abilities on your bar that do like either one or two things so you're really very bar hungry um, because a lot of the abilities are good but a lot of the abilities only do like one thing that's really important that you need and like the secondary effects are kind of kind of useless or are underwhelming for that to say the least anyway this is my opinion and basically we've been playing after level 50 in battlegrounds for the better part of about 20 hours or so multiple bgs various sets i tried hybrid sets i think a hybrid set setup would work out better because for example you could run a sword and shield and then you can, a lot of the abilities a lot of the utility abilities for example like the either morph of here of the guardian spirit is a very useful ability the hex is a very useful ability 
Um, you could have access to blood sacrifice. For example, um, this is a very good ability on a sword and shield on a sword and shield build. Obviously, ulti gen is really good, or access to a little bit of major mending. It is very underwhelming in terms of the duration. Um, the totem I wouldn't use. This is a very good ability to have access to a root and snare. And then, of course, um, you could always make use of, for example, maybe you'd find some use for here, or you could always util utilize the blast stone. Um, you could set it off, charge your opponent with a shield charge, gap close, they get CC'd, and then the ability goes off. Um, basically, that's my opinion of the Necro. Hopefully, you have a better experience. For someone who's playing, playing the game for about five years, and I play every single class, stamina magic and hybrid i find the at the very least the magic negro to be severely underwhelming thank you and god bless